Lots of people ask why I draw so fast. And there's quite a few reasons for that actually. The first reason that I actually don't draw, why I draw so fast and don't take my time in drawing is I'm very impatient. So that's a good and a bad thing. It's a good thing because I was able to kind of figure out a way of drawing without spending tireless hours on one piece. Just because my patience wouldn't last all that long. I've been working on that actually because it's not the best thing, but but it's also helped me be more efficient in the way I can see what I'm drawing, making decisions, being bold with the process, and not being too concerned about the outcome, and also finding this language of expression that I can't get if I'm spending too much time on a piece. It allows me to, um, to have this chaotic and harmonious, expressive element that I can't find otherwise. But it also allows for a lot more mistakes and inaccuracies. So it's important to practice to do this often and to be very bold with it. This is a whole bunny stuff. It's falling apart. Isn't that crazy? But I'm still using it because material is material. Sometimes using material that's super old, probably should have been retired. Gives it a lot of character, you know? Now everything's refined and sharp. I lost my knee eraser. There it is. Okay. This is a kneaded eraser. I love to use them because they didn't leave any crumbs like those pink erasers that you get in school. But you can erase so effectively. It's almost like sculpting. I'm not necessarily erasing the mistakes because I changed my mind about these things, but it's almost like hitting it with light. First you hit it with shadow and then you hit it with light. You can continuously work on these pieces, even if you start them really quickly, you make them more like gesture drawings like this, and then refine, refine, refine. You can endlessly refine them until you have almost a photographic image. Although I stop working on a piece when I see that, when I see that it's just getting a little bit worse. Like it's getting a little less interesting, right? It might be looking better, it might be looking a lot more natural, but if it's less interesting, then I think that it's finished. Even if it's not as accurate as it could possibly be. Here's our first sketch. Let's try it again. Put that one on the ground. Let's see here. Pull up another reference. It's good to have a folder of references too that you can just kind of pick out from. To see what you're interested in. Sometimes male, sometimes female, sometimes old, young, different races, all of it. Just makes it really interesting. Now we're gonna pick up some willow charcoal instead of compressed charcoal. That last one is compressed charcoal, so it's way darker. And we'll get real gestural with this. A key to working this way is squinting at your reference, squinting at whatever you're looking at, even if you're working in real life from a real model. Just squint out what you're looking at because you won't get distracted by all the details. Don't be afraid to make these broad marks that you don't see in your actual image. Spend some time looking at your reference and see what you find interesting about it and harmonious about it. See, this is already kind of interesting to me, so I'm just gonna blend this out here my hand, pop in some, bring out those highlights again with the kneaded eraser, sculpt it out of them. Spend a lot more time erasing than I do drawing sometimes. Because I'm not just fixing mistakes. 
Although there are tons of mistakes in this. It's almost like sculpting. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. Let's try one more. We just ended after this third one. Um, maybe something more extreme on the angle here. More vertical angle here. Drop that one right there. Let's go pan pastel on this one. So it's like a pastel material from a pan. Let's get into it. Way more extreme on the angles here. There's an eye there, an eye here, eyebrow, nose, mouth. These things are really close because of foreshortening. Foreshortening means that something looks to be angled and shortened when it really isn't just based on the tilt of the head. Like things are in line because of our perspective. And a dark shadow on the chin here. This is actually a really difficult angle if you guys want to try it out. But I like to be challenged. I don't like to just do what, what it is that always comes out good because you won't grow as an artist that way. Just a few more seconds on this one. More expression on those lines out there. Darkening the whole thing, giving it a mid-tone but not losing those shadows and then eraser for highlights once again. Bit at that. If you guys really want to find out how to draw like this, I go really in depth on how, draw, how you can draw real fast like this in my course, my drawing course that's coming out real soon. So keep on the lookout for that. I believe it's uh, July? July, right? July what? 15th? 15th? 14th? It'll be in July. So hope to bestow that those lessons upon you guys. Hope you guys enjoy them as well. Um, check out madcharcoal.com for all my art and everything that has to do with that. Love you guys.